How's it going guys? I'm your host Carbon Gaming. Welcome back to this week's Adventure Quest video and I am super duper excited because finally we have the Necromancer update. So this update was uh, quite delayed because the staff actually needed time to go ahead and work on the skills but now that it's finally out, let's go and take a look. Okay, I think you'll need to train up the skills first. So first of all, I'm actually going to uh, resort out my inventory simply because I was doing a little bit of farming, you can see here, not being very lazy anymore, 500 million gold, still a long way to go before I max it out, but yeah, it is what it is. Okay, and we will finally be able to see the skills this time, rather than just a simple pet customization that we got last time. That was pretty underwhelming, uh, to be very honest, but... Yeah, anyways, I don't think the training will probably have monsters that scale to your level. It'll probably just be uh, lower level monsters because these are class armors after all and I don't think they want to use uh, or they don't want to let us uh, lock it to only the max level player. So lower level players should be able to do this as well. That being said, okay, uh, I think we have everything we need. Okay, let's shift this up first. Just in case, you know, just in case they decide to screw with us. But they didn't for the Paladin quest, so I'm assuming the Necromancer one should be the same. So we have skills 1 to 5. Let's go ahead and check it out. So we're going to skip the intro because we already read through it. And, ooh, Kaylee Obsidia, I will finish your preliminary studies. Korriban, good. Okay, so you can see her, she has received new artwork. Very, very nice. Let's explore the room. Anything we can click on? <clears throat> Not yet. Maybe uh, as you unlock the quest, more new uh, items will get added to the room, similar to what they did for the Paladin quest. Okay, so Necromancer gear. Let's see what's new. Uh, Necro stuff. Okay, this is new. Level 150 version. Devastating by rare special attack. Can even impede your opponent's healing if you are a Necromancer. Nice. Okay, uh... Weapons or items that sort of reduce the opponent's healing or cancel the opponent's healing isn't very useful inside of AQ because we rarely see monsters that actually heal themselves. The only ones that I can think of are like zombies and those are like foot minions that you can one or two shot yeah, or like vampires. You know, those sort of monsters, the healing is insignificant so you don't really, uh, you won't really need it. And then you have Calvera Club. This one can replenish some of your HP. Uh, could actually be good, don't know yet. And this one, oh, this is not a max level version. Okay, so we have Necromancer Cloak here, level 70. And for the spells, we have the Randomizing Blight. Uh, accurate spell that scrambles the basic element defenses of a foe. Okay, so this works like your Rainbow Ray Gun, your Prime Chaos Orb and all that. But it cannot affect enemies of the Darkness Realm, or those who do not take damage from Darkness and raises your enemy's offense. Okay, so this, I think it's quite similar to Prime Chaos Orb. But a lower level version and obviously you can't use it on enemies who are uh, darkness, okay. And this one, Death Knight Minion Armor. Oh, this one we already bought it. Necromancer Cloak, I believe you have it as well, yep. They changed it, they changed it from Testy Cloak to just the regular cloak. So I'm going to shift this up over here and I'm actually going to bring the... Death Knight armor thingy uh, all the way up again so we can take a look at it. Where is it? Death Knight minion armor. There you are. <clears throat> now, uh, when I first went through or reviewed the Paladin items, I was pretty critical of them because uh, it just kept slipping my mind that those are not max level items. Okay, but now uh, I will try my best to remember that these are not max level. So uh, I will be a little less rough on how on their numbers because obviously the numbers will be a lot higher at the max level okay so let us become a necromancer and there done wait elite necromancer armors uh oh okay so i think this one will be the max level version it will only be unlocked once all the skills are unlocked okay so necromancer quests and uh, past quests huh wait hold on can I? Oh, wait a minute. Do I need to reset my class level? Hold on. Let me just reset my class level. Okay, because I think maybe you need to do that to access the new, the new skills. I'm not entirely sure, but I think there's some new quests as well. So again, okay, check them out. I managed to forge false identities for the two of us within the Orcus archive. We'll be posing as members of the Liminal Mental assigned to internal security. It's a very limiting role outside of one circumstance. The Liminal Mental is about the one way for 
a captured necromancer to escape a very unpleasant existence. This makes them ruthless peacekeepers because of how vicious and powerful their peers are. We will use this to our advantage. Archivists will be questioned for starting fights, but never for finishing them. This alibi will be stretched against enemy leaders, but I can't use the same masters forever. It won't be hard to push them into conflict, but our enemies are already expecting trouble, so they'll be prepared with all sorts of curses, wards and countermeasures when we push them. Watch out for that. I work on spreading our influence to make sure we can assume different identities with every shot. You exploit the enforcement system to take out enemy leaders as we expose them. Ready to begin? Okay, let's go. <clears throat> a potential ongoing threat to the neutrality of the Orcus archive has been identified. Through the reports issued by Theon Notches, the liminal mentor has been informed of the following disruption of our peace accords. Evidence suggests that the Shadow Ritualist, known as Threat Cutter Victoria, has compromised the peace within our halls by committing unauthorized battery within the archive. Let's go. Yep, under level staff weight. Huh. So we have a special effect making use of the new system here, uh, Direct Tenebromancer. This enemy is powered or contaminated by reckless use of Collapse Shadow Power. Ooh, interesting. Uh, we'll just go into our Hydromancer Blood Mage, bring out Celtic View, let's get this started. So we want to use energy, and I think we should be able to one-shot this guy. Uh, energy pet will be... What is our energy pet again? Meteor Jelly, okay, let's have it restore MP. And we'll turn on this for the intellect boost. Now I'm not going to do all the fancy stuff because I think this should be pretty easy and straightforward. So you should be able to breeze through the quest. I'm mainly looking uh redoing the quest again for the law because there's obviously going to be something new I think. And done, next. Shadow Bracken. Okay, so a bunch of water monsters here that has been corrupted by the shadows, it seems. Nice. Another Draco water mage. Okay, so af after every two f battles, you get a full heal. These shouldn't be too long because there are lots of class quests to go through. And I will assume that the new Necromancer probably has uh, 20 levels similar to the new Paladin. Of course, I could be wrong. This is just my guess. Maybe you should bring out a guest as well to speed things up. Monsters are getting a turn which they shouldn't be getting a turn. Okay, ball lightning. So Paladin armor is a jack of all trades. You can use uh, Beastmaster, Warrior, Rogue, no, sorry, uh, Mage, Ranger, you know, all kinds of fancy stuff. I wonder what will Necromancer armor be like? Will it cater to a specific build or will it be like Paladin in the sense that it is a jack of all trades? Beware, your mark is protected by a trap or has turned to a focus point into a battleground that favors them. Unless you do something about it, the following effect will be in place. You have fragile applied to you upon entering battle. Ooh, okay, also I want to talk about this. Uh, that was why the release took so long. They also implemented this new system whereby if you succeed on the roll, you'll have a bonus beneficial effect uh, affecting you for the rest of the battle whereas if you fail the roll you'll have a negative effect applied onto you in this case it will be fragile so this is quite interesting okay so stat rolls are not just about whether you need to redo the entire quest or not okay you have the following option seize power turn the enemy's effect against them or otherwise seize control of their power side gaining a beneficial effect dispel take cover and attempt to nullify the effect hindering your approach before you notice well, of course you want to do Seize Power, why would you ever want to do Dispel? Unless the role for Dispel is easier than Seize Power. Huh. You can choose our following boost, but note that stronger boost will make it more difficult to Seize Power from your foe. Oh, okay, so Celerity seems to be the biggest room. Plus 30, Stat Roll difficulty, this one is plus 25, Paralyze, wow, wait a minute. Oh, Attempt, okay, so it's not a confirmed stun, okay. Status Potence. Strong burn, prismatic burn. Oh, this is really good. Uh, days, days and stun. What is the difference? What is the difference? Isn't it the same? So I don't get it. Uh, weak burn. Okay, we try to go for the highest one. Celerity, eighty nine intelligence, but oh, three hundred thirty SP. Barely made it. Nice. 
Barely seize your foe's power. Yep, of course. And we get celerity. Ooh, two extra times per round. Wow. Don't think we'll be needing it though, but this is very useful for uh, the lower level. <clears throat> oh, so it's only for the boss fight? Oh, okay. I guess it's only for the boss fight, but yeah. Okay. Uh, this could be good for lower level players who are trying to get the quest and, you know, need a little bit of a help to get past the entire quest. But in my opinion, like, it is not that fantastic simply because of the fact that you actually need uh, a pretty high stat roll to get the best effect. Of course, if you can aim for lower effects, okay, so plus 30, which means that the stat roll, if you don't want any effects, it's only a plus uh, it's only 59. You only need to roll above 59 to succeed, which is still decently high, but not as bad as uh, something like 89. So lower level players can definitely still go ahead and do the quest with relative ease. If uh, you want to get a beneficial effect, but at the same time, you uh, are unable to get such a succeed on such a high stat roll, especially if you, uh, not all of your stats are maxed out yet. So yep, let's keep that in mind. Brohado Necromancer. So pretty short quest, just a few monsters, not much story. It's quite similar to Paladin in the sense that maybe only every few levels you get some sort of story, like every five levels or something like that, you get some big story revelation. But other than that, the other levels in between is just a few basic monsters. One boss monster, we'll try to dispel later on. Let's see if it's actually cheaper or uh, if it actually changes anything, okay? 10 Z tokens, nice. Let's try Dispel. Okay, Dispel is Charisma, only 60. Yep, Dispel is definitely easier. You don't get all of the bonus stuff, but to be honest, why would you not... Uh, ooh, Sinister Spirits from Beyond, interesting. Yeah, there's no reason to use Dispel, I don't get it. Well, what is the point of Dispel here? There's no reason to use it, unless you just don't want to play around the stat roll. Like, you are not confident of getting it. But then again, why not just go for the boon and try for the lowest one, which is only plus 5 difficulty. There's only 5 more points. So, yeah, isn't isn't that better than just doing the spell? I don't know. That's that's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Why, would, why under any circumstance would you ever want to use this spell over the one that grants you a buff? That is just, like, way better. Uh, let's just do Chain Lightning. Okay, so we need Intellect and Charisma. Seems like this is, uh, it could be sort of like a direction in which they are trying to hint us at, for which the Necromancer class is taking. Maybe it could be a Beast Mage. That is perfect because that is what our character currently is. We are a Beast Mage, so Necromancer will work really well for our class currently. But of course, this is just the first few quests, so they might have other stat rolls thrown in there uh, during the later parts, which isn't out yet. So they might have something to do with strength, maybe something to do with dex, we don't know. Okay, so now we only know that it uses Intellect and Charisma for the stat rolls, which uh, hints that there could be something for Beast Mage. That's nice. We'll try out a different uh, boon later on, and let's see if the stat roll actually changes. Whoops. Wrong one. Should have used the chain lightning instead, but that's fine. Seize power. Let's try and do weak burn. Okay, intellect. Yeah, like, <laughs> just go ahead and do seize power. There is no reason why you want to use this spell. I don't understand. It's only two rounds. How strong is the prismatic burn? 84. Uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. This is a weak one though. Wonder what the strong one is like. Let's try for the strong one later. Okay, so now we are level 3. <coughs> two more levels. Okay. And then we will go ahead and test out the necromancer armor on our punching bag, which is the combat practice trainer. Come on, come on. So 
So it's like what? Four battles and one boss, I think. Is it four or is it six? Can't remember. Let's see. Yeah, okay. I think it's six battles and then one boss. So seven monsters in total. Then you just uh, complete the quest. Okay, pretty short. I like that. Okay, that was not short enough to kill him. Unfortunate. <coughs> oh no, uh, it's six monsters, not seven. Sorry. Okay. Now let's try the uh, strong burn. Okay. Strong burn. Let's see. Nice. We beat it by one. Okay. Uh, 0 0.075, let's see, so the weak burn did about 80 something, okay, the strong burn is 200 something, so that's like, uh, extra, that's like 3 times the power, okay, nice. It's still using intellect, so no changes there, and now finally the last one, level 5, okay, very good work so far. Your initial grasp of the new matter is solid and the liminal mantle is busy enough with settling the security incidents that they are not picking up on us. Not that most mental necromancers will be able to pick up on this power quickly enough to distinguish us from the crowd. Their wards aren't turned to this and we use anima overflow very efficiently. Their own powers are distinct and loud enough to cover our traces with longer lasting interference but these haven't exactly been quiet incidents. I've already been involved in a lot of fights that will draw some attention. Paranoia for the cause, so long as you don't get exposed in the process, solving minor incidents actually solidif solidifies your cover. We have to be more careful when we move on to major ones though, which we'll want to eventually, and by eventually I mean now. Authorities from each mentor are all settled, but they haven't met yet. The archive will be in high security for weeks first in case they were followed. They'll be jumping at shadows, especially after I ensure the shadow mental leaders get a positively incendiary report about their peers and hosts while a certain liminal mentor and forcer approaches. Okay, I'm ready. Let's see what we have. Perturbing. Okay, we have Silas here. Ooh, his armor is really cool though. This is a new necromancer armor, right? I meant to blend in with a few of our more experienced necromancers so as to employ a decoy during summons. But it seems you were correct about them being identified and tailed. How long should we wait for our Duran operatives? They should have set sail soon after the recall. Even aboard civilian vessels, the other leaders should have made landfall early enough to be here soon. Don't wait for them at all. Whoever is puppeteering the civil war foresaw that we attempt to expand our power base and lay ambushes to scapegoat us as if the blackmail wasn't trouble enough. Any that ever already returned considered them lost. We've had, we've had enough defections to the Brujado and the Saligras in particular that any intelligence they can bring is compromised anyways. There'll be easy pickings for the Scythe Mantle. It will expand their influence. Please, they are in tatters. They barely had enough grants to send north while their leaders hit here. Trying to encompass the Ren as well would spread, spread them paper, spread them thinner than rice paper. Hmm, careful not to underestimate the ones here though. This mentor has always recovered swiftly. There are many packs and hasty bargaining habits make them a wild card for recruitment. The unaffiliated and those pressed into our ranks could swell their numbers if they pull off a power grab. I've had them watch I've had them watched for such moves since their arrival and Ah, there's the report. What's the matter? What did they find? The liminal mongrels are coming for us. They know it all, the view's closing. Our experiments in direct and localized tenebromus see. They're informant all along, stalking the other leaders. The side mental planted one. They are starting a coup and leaked our attempts to contact Erebus to the White Masters as a distraction. The Limnal will have our heads, then get stabbed in the back. We leave now. Wow, these are really cool looking uh, new armors. That's a while since the false report should have made it here. I wonder if I came here too early. Hold it there, I just saw the patrol for this wing. Where are you going? Oh, I headed back to check on this threat report. I've got an urgent one sent to me, but I'm pretty sure there's been an error of some sort. Ah, heck, not this again. Let me guess, reported by Steve, chat named Steve. <laughs> Close enough, that's got to be a mistake, right? I wish it was, but it keeps happening, and they keep being actual reports. Sometimes it's a silly infraction, but I show up and they're up to something big. So just go check it out, and do you hear that? Whoa, what are you incoming? Finally, <laughs> we have some great animation, okay? It's just a simple animation of exploding open the door, but yeah, I think that was really nice, okay? I've been waiting for this for so long, like, 
some proper decent animation okay even though it's just a small door exploding but it's better than your basic quest animation okay so yeah the wait was well worth it hopefully we'll see more interesting uh animations throughout the rest of the quest i don't know if the team will have time to do that but you know it's something that i uh really enjoy looking at fancy a animations while doing the quest and of course if you can i've been asking for so many times add music to your quest that will uh that will like I don't know, just change up the whole thing, like make everything so much better if you actually just include music in your quests. Like some sort of dark, ominous, eerie tone would be nice uh, for this uh, necromancer style quest. You know what I mean. And then maybe change to some exciting battle music when you're facing the boss, okay? So, yep, let's do blood flow here again. Five Z tokens. Okay, Shadow Chimera. This one, yep, still not a big deal. We'll hit him with. Let's do water. Yep, I think he's going to survive one turn. That's fine. Necroniancer. Okay, this is. <laughs> This is new. These necros have died. They are fur to resemble a skeleton, and they seem to have picked up some knowledge of necromancy as well. As well, huh? Interesting. So we have a neko, but a uh, necromancer, which is a necronians. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Interesting. Not a moment too soon. So you are already upon us. Contain yourself, Silas. You are violating the sanctity of the Orcus Archive. If you value your life and leadership over the fledgling shadow mantle, you will stand down. Attack anyone else and neither shadows nor leech them will save you. Fledgling, listen to yourself talk. We derive our methods and power from the most accomplished plots to have shaped our world. And you of all people talk down to me, savoring the moment, are we? The scythe mantle turns on us, and you are all too pleased to finish the job. The guardians of knowledge, keepers of the very pillar meant to prevent us from falling to treachery. I suppose I don't get to be disappointed. How does it feel to finally have the upper hand? I will genuinely like to know before I lack the sentience to express it. Make things even easier for me, why don't you? What? Ahem, Silas, make this easier on yourself. Oh, I intend to. Let's go, Silas, Shadow Mentor Leader. Okay, let's see what he has up his sleeve. Looks like it's very similar to what we faced in the... Uh, how do you call it? The Paladin uh, boss fight, okay? You have two minions and then you have Silas, okay? So we'll just do blood flow. The current leader and primary combatant of the Shadow Mental. This one's mysterious necromancer has been set up by Kaylee of Sidia. Thinking that the other mentals have turned on him, he's attempting a violent escape. Okay, so we just attack again. I am not sure what he did there, but yeah, uh that was easy. Steve, Steve and Leader, not Steve. <laughs> of course. You just you just took down one of the strongest combatants in the mental. I did. I mean, should I not have done that? He attacked first and looked a little unhinged. They must have been fighting each other inside there, judging by the ruckus. Am I in trouble? No, you're absolutely not in trouble. We all vouched that it had to be done, but for the current leader of the Shadow Mantle to turn on us like that, the Inner Circle's warnings may have been right after all. Which warnings? I've been getting flooded with security reports. So excuse me if I'm out of the loop. Jeez, you must be the poor soul that's been running around taking care of half the recent incidents. I've been wondering if someone figured out a way to redirect their orders to you. Wouldn't surprise me. It's the report from two days ago, right about the time the trouble started. The big hoods think the Scythe and Shadow Mantles are each trying to get Paladins to finish the other so they can recover. When the whole Void Mantle disappeared, they started testing the limits of our neutrality. A task force has been in place for a while, watching over their most influential members for signs of a hostile takeover. So it seems like the Necromancer uh, quest line is taking a very similar approach to the Paladin quest line, whereby instead of being purely good and uh, actively seeking out to destroy undead, destroy evil, and the Necromancer being uh, evil and just want to wanting to destroy everything that's good and you know just uh, going for doom and destruction, both are seeking more of like a neutral approach, whereby okay, I'm just going to do my thing. Uh, and you're just going to do your thing. As long as we don't touch your people, you don't touch us, you know. As for the Paladin Order, whereas if uh, someone is in help, they'll go and help them. But they won't go and actively go and kill uh, undead or something like that. And for the... Unless they are proven to be evil. Whereas for the uh, Necromancers, it seems like they also want to take a neutral approach. I don't know how they 
are going to do that as necromancers. Maybe they'll just practice their own dark arts and all that kind of stuff without interfering with other people. Let's see. I'd like you to join us. Silas may not have been the most powerful necromancer, but as far as fighting goes, even if he was worn down, I'd say taking him on merits a recommendation from me. There's a lot to take in at once, but we have to deal with being stuck here while they loom over our heads and plan to take over. It's not like I have much of a choice. Alright, I'm in. And it looks like there's some sort of turf wars going on within the whole necromancer uh, society or order or whatever you call it. Interesting. Okay, level 5 necromancer. Nice. So that's done. Now let us uh, see if you can access this. Nope, of course not. Now let's go ahead and test out the new necromancer armors on the combat practice trainer. Right, very very excited here. So let's bring, uh, let's hide the pet. Let's start. Shields will take this away. Weapons will find something that doesn't have a special. Okay, no, not this. Sorry, which one doesn't have a special? Uh, Safira Nibot. Okay. Necromancer cloak. And ooh, oh, I think I need to customize the skeleton again. The customization went away for some weird reason. And uh, once again, the armor is the same. I wish that they'll add some bot at the bottom half of the armor. Like the armor is just the top half. It almost looks like the undead minion is wearing a freaking bra. I don't know, man. <laughs> That's just how I feel. Like, why is the bottom completely exposed? Why is there no armor for the leggings or whatnot? Or at least like, what do you call that? Greaves or pants or <laughs> whatever it is. You know, it's just the freaking top half that's protected that that makes no sense to me whatsoever but okay uh i prefer the cloak okay so let's see here 39 37 for the two mrm okay strong against uh darkness obviously 58 percent secondary resist to ice and earth 67 percent tertiary resist to wind and energy at 84 percent okay fire and water at 93 percent and weak to light at 101 percent so it's a neutral armor and ooh, looks like you have a barrier going on not sure what's going on with that hide this where did the barrier come from okay so they are taking a very similar approach to how they did the paladin co uh class okay with four of these circle thingies okay expertise god and this thing is blocking me obviously okay Let's see that again. Having unbound your anima regeneration and harness the overflow, you can now employ it for unique curses that few beings are prepared to resist. Your, your status effects are keener as a result. Okay, you get a plus 20 potence to all status effects. That is pretty nice, in my opinion. Okay, and this is for the level 70 version. I don't know if the higher level version will give a slightly stronger boost but 20 is pretty good and you can couple this with your cracked ornament or any of your other status boosting items this is actually a really strong boost you can get up to like 40 something potence boost for your statuses and i think that is really really strong okay next up uh Fear. The impact of this spell delivers a sensation frighteningly similar to imminent death. If your enemy can feel fear, it can make it rise from their very soul. So in the past, what fear did was an unavoidable attack that reduced the monster's MRM by 3 permanently for the duration of the battle. So that is a very good skill and in fact, it was a very commonly used skill to beat unbeatables like uh, the wolf wing okay, when they had a lot of MRM. So you just scramble the monster's resistances and then slowly wither him down with fear until the his MRM becomes zero so you can land all of your hits. Okay, I wonder what the new fear looks like now. Okay, so you have three fears. One is already unlocked, the rest it unlocks at level 6 and level 12. Okay, so the first one. Looming Fear, a darkness attack concealing a debilitating hex that will attempt to inflict fear. Is it intelligence, charisma, and luck for damage and effects? Wow, nice. So I have intelligence and charisma maxed. I don't have any luck, but this should still be pretty good. 229 SP, I guess it inflicts regular fear on your opponent. Okay, Searing Fear, fire attack concealing a debilitating hex that will attempt to inflict fear. Inte okay, this is fire version and this is what oh, okay so one is darkness this one is fire both seem to be the same okay same sp cost just different elements primal fear some enemies do not fear that they'll still fear this spell when you dim their very soul for long enough to wreak havoc on their body okay this one seems to be the same okay based off the description okay you have the same sp cost as well i'm guessing this one could do earth damage i don't know let's try looming fear first okay Ooh, three hits. 
Wow. 50% chance. Okay, nice. Let's see if it stacks. Wow, the artwork is really amazing though. I, I really like the artwork. 87.5% chance each round. Ooh, wow, nice. How high can we get it to go? The damage is decent for level 70 armor. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, 87.5 seems to be the max here. <clears throat> oh no, 93.8%. Wow, this is pretty crazy. Wow, wow, wow. Almost 100% chance. Okay, uh, but obviously you don't need to go that high. 80% plus is probably good enough. Maybe you might want to go to 90%, but yeah, this is really good. Okay, next up. What's level 2? Okay, race skeleton. Spawn skeletal support. You can summon willing undead allies or constructs animated by your own spiritual energy. All guessers have their upkeep in SP. Okay, Deathless Knight, a fallen knight whose oath endures beyond death. They can take on a greater share of your power to go berserk. Uses your weapons element. So, berserk, I will mean that it. If I'm guessing correctly, it will probably mean that they deal more damage, but at the cost of their BTH. And then at level seven, you unlock undead beast, an undead chimera of your own making. This dangerous vessel of your life force has been a chilling presence and can inflict grievous bleeding. Okay, so this one can inflict bleed, and this one. Deathless Draco Leech at level 13. An ally undead dragon empowered by your necromancy deals bonus darkness damage to foes you have inflicted with fear of bleeding. Oh, nice. Can also seek between fire and darkness for burning attacks. Wow. Okay, so it looks like uh, they are really going the beast mage route for necromancer. I like that. Deathless Knight, let's bring this out. Let's attack. And this is the same as your minion with the death knight armor. Uh, click to increase damage and upkeep with lower accuracy. Rip and tear their guts. Huh. What's the upkeep like? I'm not really keeping track of the cost, but I guess it doesn't matter. And it looks like we have a permanent HP barrier, okay, for Necromancer. At level 70, it's 140 something. I assume at level uh 150, maybe it goes up to 200? I don't know. 200 plus that is really very good does it refresh every turn though that's what i'm curious about if it does then this is pretty crazy okay uh let's see oh we already have this hold on see the next one animal ward storing excess anima from yourself and fallen enemies you bind it to your flesh as a temporary barrier at the start of each battle grow stronger with your arcane skill command and ability to withstand the process endurance okay so this makes use of your endurance stat as well i have two stats maxed out Okay, maybe this doesn't increase with level. This only increase with uh, your stats. Maybe, I don't really know. But two stats maxed out at level 70, I'm getting a level 142 HP barrier. Imagine if I endurance maxed out as well. Okay, maybe you give another 70 more points. So 200 plus points for a level 70 version. If it goes higher with uh, the level 150 version, that'll be crazy. Maybe like a 400, 500 point HP barrier at the start of the battle. That is insane. Okay, assuming you have those three stats maxed out. But then again, who uses endurance anyway, apart from like your uh, backlash builds. And also, uh, if you have maxed out endurance, I guess the HP barrier wouldn't matter at all. But with intellect and charisma maxed out, yeah, this is pretty good. Grievous Weave. Okay, weaving anima power hexes between the steps of your normal spell casting. You attempt to inflict curses uh, beyond the effects of your spells. Now weave your spells to inflict bleeding wounds. Okay. Oh. So what? I have to cast a spell to inflict... Oh, okay. So it's sort of like a status toggle of sorts, I guess. If you use a damage spell, then you can have a chance of... Uh, what? Causing some sort of bleed to your opponent? Let's test it out. Okay, so let's attack. Do tome spells work? Yes, they do. Okay. Level 82. So it's not based off your uh, weapon level. It is based off the armor's level. Okay, 82. Huh, interesting. This is level 70 armor, right? Why is why is the power level 82? That's kind of weird. But okay, I'll take it. Uh, not a very good chance of inflicting the effect. Even on a severely underleveled combat practice trainer. With multiple hits on the spell and a plus 20 uh, potence boost to your status. So, 
This is a little bit underwhelming. It could be because it's the level, it's not the max level version. That's why it's so hard to inflict the bleed. But yeah, it's not inflicting as often as I like it to inflict. So, hmm. Let's try this again. Nope. Oh, okay. There we have it. 0 0.25. Harm damage each turn. 39. Uh, pretty weak. Okay. Endurance save each round to heal wound and end status. Uh, let's see if you can get it again. Let's see if you can stack this. Seems like it's not stacking up very well. Okay. Now it goes up to 0 0.5. So the damage should be doubled. Yeah. So it's a permanent effect until the enemy resists us with a save. That's pretty decent, okay. Uh, the power is a little bit weak, okay. Power, uh, I mean this power, not... I don't know if it will go up with the class level though, but... Yeah, not bad. I mean, this is a free skill, right? Oh, okay. If it's free, then... Yeah, maybe it shouldn't be that strong. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. And last but not least, we have Undead Giant. Animate the skeleton of a fallen giant. This enormous anima power vessel is amplified by your hexes, dealing bonus damage to enemies affected by your necromancer aptitude and class skill status effects. Okay, 412 SP. Wow, this is pretty expensive. Let's see. Wait a minute. Oh, it respects your weapon special? Oh, okay. So with a tome, I can't use this. So I'm going to use it without a tome. One, two. 600 plus damage. Wow. For a level 70 plus armor. This is crazy amount of damage, guys. Wow, wow, wow. Can you imagine the max level version? And this is without any boosters or whatnot. So the max level version will probably deal like what? I don't know. Easily over a few, over a thousand damage. Maybe... I'm estimating the max level 1 to do like 1,500 damage or 2,000 damage, something like that. This is pretty insane. Of course, the SP cost is pretty high, but yeah, uh, I would say it's a very strong skill. And the animation, not bad. I like it. Uh, my only gripe so far is obviously still this Death Knight minion armor. Like, come on, give it some pants or something. <laughs> Why does it not have any uh, bottom... <laughs> Armor, yeah. But all in all, I really like how uh, what they have done with the class so far. The animation's very on point, okay. The effects, uh, pretty good, okay. I wouldn't say they are my favorite, okay. But they are really good, okay. They are pretty good and they are pretty strong. I would rate the effects, uh, the practicality of the armor so far about a 8 out of 10. And for the artwork, I will rate it like a uh, 8.5 out of 10, okay. 1.5. Minus away for taking away 1.5 times score because no leg armor. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, that's my review on the Necromancer armor so far. I'm very excited to see what else the staff has in store for this armor. And I think it's looking really good. And yeah, that's going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to this channel. If you guys would like to see more such feature content. Till the next time, I'm your host, Corban Gaming. Peace out.